Earlier this week at Annunciation, we had a funeral for a man named Ed Pierce. He passed away at the age of 86. And 10 days ago, I went to anoint him and to pray the prayers for the dying over him while his wife of 57 years, Janet, and their children and grandchildren were gathered around the bed and we prayed those beautiful prayers of the church. And as I first arrived into the hospital room though, Janet reminded me of something that I had already known, but she said, Father, Ed's Catholic faith means everything to him. And then she also reminded me as proof of that, Father, in our 57 years of marriage, we missed Mass four times. She then described to me why she missed them, and I tried to gently tell her that those are all excused absences. <laughs> but she wanted nothing to do with those explanations. They were taking care of sick people, and, uh, or they were sick themselves. But anyways, we just, I just let it stand at that. We hear in the gospel today, Jesus gives us a command, a teaching, and he repeats it four times in a very brief span of today's gospel. He says these three words four times. Remain in me. We also hear it echoed in the second reading for today's mass. But again, Jesus says that four times. Remain in me. And if I can use Ed for just a moment as an example of so many other people, many of you here today, many from his generation, right? He remained in Christ. He was a person who grew up Catholic, grew up in Brazil, walked to school at Annunciation, served in the military, was in a loving marriage for 57 years, had a great family. In the later years, their life was spent in their, the the thing that they looked forward to the most, that Ed looked forward to the most, was the Sunday meals with the grandchildren. By every definition, including his own and his wife's own, he flourished. He bore much fruit. Remain in me. I think when we think about you know, every generation, we recognize every generation has its challenges, right? And, and some of those challenges are unique to each particular generation. Some things that the next generation is able to do well, sometimes because of the sacrifices and things that were made by previous generations, right? Sometimes because of that, what one generation struggled with, another generation is good at or is more equipped to handle, whereas there might be challenges that the next generation, the younger generation, has to figure out on its own or struggle through. So every generation has its challenges. And I would think that, and I'd like to just say that to those who are coming up today, my age, my generation, and below, I think that one of the challenges that we face is that we judge things too quickly. By, the, and by that, I mean, by judging, what I mean is we, we determine or we think that we determine whether or not something is effective by looking at it too quickly, by making snap judgments. And it's understandable because everything else in our lives from our generation, so much of it is instant. Right? So much of it is instant. I can have any book any song, any movie that I want within the next 24 hours. I can have basically any food that I want in the next 24 hours, all of it brought to me. That presents a real challenge because, and here's why, and I think we see people leaving the faith as young people. The age in which people leave is, the average age now is is dropping down to 13 the people are making the decision to walk away from from God. And I think the challenge here, thinking about remaining in Christ, is this. And I kind of shared some of this at the funeral this week. 
But I think a lot of times people of my generation and younger will say, all right, let's try this prayer thing out. Let's do it for five minutes and let's see if we get what we get back. Am I a saint now that I've prayed for five minutes? Did it work? Did it change me? Did I feel anything? Nope. Okay, moving on. I'll try poetry. I'll try something else. I'll try the new age movement, whatever it might be. Right? I'm going to move on to the next thing. I, I judge it based on five minutes. Okay, my mom and dad talked to me about mass, or I hear about that. That's a mass. I used to go to mass or whatever. I've been to a mass before, or I've heard that it's good. I'll go to one. And at the end of that mass, it's like, well, should I go back? Did it change me? Did it make me into a saint? Was it a, a revolutionary experience for me? Nope. Okay, I'm done. Confession. I'm going to go. Okay, did it work? Did it change me? Did it make me into a saint? Did it have any effect on me, etc.? Right? We go, go through the line. Rosary. I hear about rosaries. I'm going to pray a rosary. I pray one. Did it change me? Did it make me into a saint? No. Okay, we move on. That's not what it means to remain in Christ. He used the word remain because why? So many things that Christ teaches us, this is talking with somebody earlier this week, right? So many of the things that the church teaches us and Christ teaches us, he teaches us these things because they do not come naturally to us. If the things came, come naturally to people, then they don't have to be taught that. So I was talking about racism last week and people, some people were like, well, the, you know, some people within the church have been racist and would say, I know, that is horrible. That's why we have the teaching. Because it's not natural or it's a thing that we struggle with at various ways and various times. And that goes for everything. So when Jesus says, remain in me, he's saying it five times in this weekend's readings because it's not natural, it's not easy to remain in Christ. Remaining in Christ is not one mass, not one, one time of, the, of confession, it's not one rosary, it's not one session of five minutes of prayer. It's... 86 years. It's 57 years of marriage. It's only missing mass four times in 86 years. That's remaining in Christ. And what happens, and I can start to, I know many of us that have done that, many of you who are here who have been doing that, who have been remaining in Christ, we know, we all know, that when we look around in our lives and we say, you know what, we've, I've been doing this for a year or five or ten or whatever it might be, we start to see that over time, like little drops of water, the encounters that we have with God and the sacraments in a particular way, but also with God in prayer, change us. I have never met, there, I'm not saying that, th that this isn't out there, but I've never met a, a, an older Catholic who's been living it for a long time, who said that the reason they did it was because of some crazy, dramatic, powerful experience at one Mass. Not that we don't have those things. We have those times where we have something particular, maybe that, that, that we encounter at Mass or we encounter in prayer, those moments. But I've never met anyone who said, yeah, I, my life did a 180 after one Mass. I've never met anyone who said, yeah, my life did a 180 after one Rosary. I've never met anybody who said my life did a 180 after 10 minutes of prayer. Remain in me, Jesus says. And we know the joy of that, hopefully, if we're here. And I want to just invite us and challenge us to call other people to that. It might be your children or your grandchildren who have left or who, who don't come as often as, they, as the church is asking us to, as Christ is asking us to, they're not remaining in Christ. Challenge them on that. Share your experience with them. Maybe it's your friends. Maybe you're my age or younger, but you have a lot of friends that have fallen away. That's my, I feel that call with the people that I know, that I interact with, that are of my generation. How can I share with them the joy and the things that have happened in my life because I feel like I've remained in Christ despite my imperfections. Can we call people to that? 
can we counter the people who say, well, I did that once? And let them know that that's really not what God is calling us to. He's calling us to remain with him and to remain with his son. We pray to have the strength to continue to do that ourselves, but also be joyful witnesses to other people, helping call them to that rest, calling them to that spot where they too can remain with Christ. We pray that all those who have only tried Christianity in a passing way might have the courage to listen to Christ's exhortation tonight, not to just make it a quick little thing, but to make a life of faith something where we are remaining and resting in the presence of God.